In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily create a Pareto chart in Excel. And the advantage of doing so is that it can help you identify the main issues, causes, and customers that are making up your large, your largest values. So in this example, I've got a table showing an issue type and the frequency of these issues. So these are, let's say, customer returns when they're returning them for, let's say, a damaged item, an incorrect invoice, late delivery, all sorts of issues. And we wanna basically call our attention to, to the most important items or which ones are taking up the lion's share of these of these complaints. So before we, we actually create the Pareto chart, the one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is sort this data to make sure that your frequency values are in descending order. So to do that, I'm just gonna click on column B here and on the data tab, there's an option to sort from Z to A, so highest to lowest. And so now we've got that sorted. And this is important to, just to make sure that our Pareto chart looks correct. So now I can go in and just insert that chart. So if I go to the insert tab and click on this button here to expand the charts window, and now I'm gonna see all the charts possible that I can use as opposed to just the recommended ones. And if I click on all charts, there's a section under the histogram area here and there's multiple charts here this is the main histogram chart but next to it here this is the Pareto chart and so you'll see that orange line that's indicating the cumulative value of these uh, of these uh, of these items so I'm gonna click OK and now and now you can see I've got the list of individual issue types going across here so represented by these the, by these columns and then we've got that orange line showing us the cumulative value so we can see that shipping errors collectively make up around 15% or actually over here around 30% of the total total items once we factor in damaged items then we're up to around 50% and then once we uh, include wrong product then that percentage goes higher and higher so as you can see if we want to focus on let's say the top 80% of items we'll go to around here. So if we go from missing parts, late delivery, wrong product, damaged items, and shipping errors, that's going to cover about 80% of the issues and that we have from, from customers. So this is the advantage of using the Pareto chart because we can get a glimpse of both the sheer number for the frequency of the occurrence and also the cumulative effect of adding all these together. And this is why it's important to sort it from largest to smallest so that we could quickly focus on the largest items first. Now we can also use the Pareto chart to look at, let's say, sales by product. Here we've got different products and these are total sales. And again, what we're gonna to wanna to do is sort these values from largest to smallest. And now go back to insert the Pareto chart by opening it up here and going under all charts again, histogram and Pareto chart. And this is a different different data set, but you can see it tells us a similar story where we can focus on our our top selling products. So if we wanted to again, look at the top 80%, so 80% is around here. So we're around here. So if we include all these items here, that's gonna be about 80% of our total sales based on these products. So if we wanna focus on the top certain percentage, the top, whether it's the top 50%, top 60%, top 70%, all we have to do is basically line up this percentage with this orange line here and see where that cutoff is and which items are being included. Now, a quick tip for you though, if you are creating a chart like this and you don't like the way these labels are looking and you wanna sort of compress them, one thing you wanna do is you can shrink the, the font size by just changing, let's say to size eight to size seven. But in some cases, what you're gonna wanna do is force them on to multiple lines. So for example, here I've got keyboard and mouse combo. So if I click into here and let's say keyboard and mouse, and then if I click just before combo, I hit alt and enter, I'm gonna force that onto a second line. And so now you can see it starts to um, shrink that space there. And I can do the same thing for other ones that are really long. So if I just look at wireless headphones, that's a particularly long one. If I go in before the H, Alt and Enter, shrink it down, push it onto two lines. So now you can see it's starting to take up less space. So if we focus on those items that are particularly long and sort of compress them, then that's gonna take up less space and it's gonna be a lot easier now if we try to expand this chart to sort of fit it all in. So you can see it's almost enough space there to, to do that. So between doing that and shrinking the font size, let's say to a size six, 
that's some of the ways that we can sort of force it to, to be able to fit on one line. So depending on how much space you have, you know, may, you may have to use that combination where if you want to push things onto a separate line, use the Alt and Enter to put it on there and then spread your chart um, wider, shrink the font just to make it look a lot cleaner like this. So it's a bit of a balancing act between the size and how much space you have to make it look how you want. But as far as creating a predator chart, you can see it's a fairly straightforward process. Once you've got it sorted from largest to smallest, and then it's just a matter of going to insert that chart from that histogram section and selecting it. And from there, you know, it's a really easy chart to create in Excel. And it gives you a lot of useful information. So that's wrap for this video. If you did like it, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.